Seriously, guys, after all this time of breakfast news, people still can't start thinking for themselves and fall for the simple stuff. Some of you might have seen that copy and paste post that appeared under some videos on my channel yesterday. It says, Brexit is a huge success and continues to go from strength to strength. Just two days ago, the UK now has trade deals with six US states with a combined gross domestic product of more than two trillion pounds, according to the Department for Business and Trade. That's so far a total of six states in the back and we are working on another six with California being with a greater GDP than the UK. A benefit of Brexit, clearly. Well, and here is now what the UK government really announced. The UK and the US state of Washington signed a new Memorandum of Understanding, an MOU, to boost trade and investment. Washington state is home to major US business, including Amazon, Starbucks, Microsoft and Boeing, and has a GDP roughly equivalent to Poland. The MOU marks the sixth delivered as part of the UK's state-level strategy to boost trade with the US and means that the combined GDP of states the UK has MOUs with now totals 2.2 trillion pounds. And that was really intelligently done. Populism and lies doesn't mean that the Tories are stupid. And in this case, they weren't even lying. They were just relying on the stupidity of tabloid readers and maybe GB News viewers, which really worked this time again. First of all, they don't claim to have concluded a trade deal with those six US states. They truthfully say that it is just a memorandum of understanding. They couldn't even agree a trade deal with the states themselves. Only the government in Washington can do that for the entire USA. I'll come to that a bit later again. Because that's like in the EU, Germany, for example, decided not to conclude its own trade agreements bilaterally when it became a member. They have transferred the competence to Brussels so that trade agreements bring more benefits through the strength as a unit. So there are no trade deals here. But as I said, the British government doesn't even claim that at all. But this is only understood that way by the audience that, that parrots certain Brexiteer media. It's unbelievable that that still works. And the government actually admits that this is an agreement for certain sectors, which ultimately involves direct contracts from companies then. But it is not a comprehensive trade agreement. But I'll explain the difference to you so that everyone will understand. A Memorandum of Understanding, an MOU, is a document that describes the broad outlines of an agreement that, that two or more parties have reached. It's not legally binding, but it is a formal expression of the party's intentions and can be used as a starting point for more formal contracts where they are legally possible. A comprehensive trade agreement, a CTA, on the other hand, is a legally binding agreement between two or more countries that covers a wide range of trade-related issues, such as tariffs, quotas and non-tariff barriers to trade. CTAs are often negotiated over many years and can be very complex. And key differences between MOUs and CTAs are very important because the MOUs are not legally binding, while CTAs are. And this means that if a party to an MOU breaches the agreement, the other party cannot take legal action to enforce it. If a party to a CTA breaches the agreement, the other party can take legal action to seek remedies, such as compensation or injunctive, injunctive relief. And MOUs are typically less detailed than CTAs. This is because MOUs are often used to establish a broad framework for cooperation, while CTAs are designed to cover a wide range of specific trade-related issues in detail. And MOUs can cover a wide range of topics, but they are often limited, like here, to a specific area of cooperation, such as research, education, or environmental protection, or here we have the uh, example aviation. CTAs, on the other hand, are designed to cover a wide range of trade-related issues, such as tariffs, subsidies, intellectual property rights, investment, and, and so much more. 
MOUs are typically negotiated much more quickly than CTAs because of this. Uh, that's because MOUs are less complex and typically cover a very narrow range of issues. CTAs, on the other hand, can take many years to negotiate because they are so complex and cover such a wide range of issues. And in general, MOUs are used when the parties involved want to express their commitment to working together on a particular issue or project, but they are not yet ready to enter into a legally binding agreement, or they are not able to because the central government would have to do that. And CTAs are used when the parties involved want to create a comprehensive and lasting framework for trade between them. If the parties are simply looking to establish a framework for cooperation or to express their intent to negotiate a formal agreement in the future, then an MOU may be sufficient. However, if the parties need to create a legally binding agreement that covers a wide range of trade-related issues, they need to have a CTA. And that could only be done by a US-UK trade deal that is definitely not inside. And I need to emphasize this again. Only the federal government of the United States can negotiate and sign comprehensive trade agreements with other countries, so trade deals. This is because trade is a matter of federal law and the Constitution gives the president the power to negotiate treaties with the advice and consent of the Senate. US states can enter into agreements with other countries on a limited range of trade-related issues such as tourism, education and cultural exchanges. These arrangements are because they are MOUs, typically non-binding, and are subject to the approval of the federal government even. In recent years, there has been some debate about whether US states should have more authority to negotiate trade agreements with other countries, and some proponents of this idea argue that it would allow states to tailor trade agreements to their specific needs and interests. And they also argue that it would give states more flexibility to respond to changes in the global economy. Opponents of this idea argue that it would lead to a patchwork of state-level trade agreements that would be difficult to manage and enforce. And they also argue that it would undermine the federal government's ability to negotiate comprehensive trade agreements that are in the best interest of the country as a whole. So it's very unlikely that the US states will be granted the authority to negotiate comprehensive trade agreements with other countries in the near future, and they still don't have this authority. But they play a role in promoting international trade through agreements on this limited issues, like one just for a few research topics in aviation or whatever. But once again, the UK Department for Business and Trade still hasn't lied in their press release there because they have not, haven't said anything different than what I said. It's true, they have signed MOUs with Indiana, North Carolina, South Carolina, Oklahoma, Utah, and now Washington. And it's also true that the combined GDP of the states the UK has MOUs with now totals 2.2 trillion pounds. But that has no real impact on the MOU. But the government even doesn't claim that. But they, of course, knew what they did when they picked the information for the press release and what would happen. But only the simple-minded readers and listeners of certain media immediately digest these numbers the way they need to believe it. So the intention behind it worked. But let's get to more facts. As I said, the UK has indeed signed MOUs with Indiana, North Carolina, South Carolina, Oklahoma, Utah and Washington. And collectively, these states imported 5.1 billion uh, pounds of UK goods in 2022. And the government is actively engaging with further states, including Florida, Texas, California, Colorado and Illinois. All true, but MOUs. We are again talking about memorandums of understandings and not trade deals, as the people claimed in, in the media and of course in the comments under my videos. It is indeed a lie that a trade deal was concluded with the six US states. And I gave you the reasons earlier. 
But of course, I know there's quite a number of people out there to whom facts and reason don't matter. But maybe I could give some clarification on this matter and fight some spreading of new lies. That would already be worth it. But I also have to add that a memorandum of understanding is nothing unusual. The EU has several with the US government for the whole USA. But that is not a big deal and definitely not a trade deal. That's why it's so important to stick to facts. But of course, populists are allergic to facts. And I could see that yesterday in a lot of uh, comments under the videos. Um, but I also could see that I have a lot of well-educated viewers on my channel that uh, gave very proper answers to these posts. So thanks uh, thank to thank you to to those viewers because that was uh, really nice to see and uh, but i decided to make this video today i had another topic uh, planned for today but i think uh, i thought i should have um, intervened here quickly and if you want to see another video right now the next one is right here in the end screen i'll see you there i'll be back <laughs>